I'm trying to record a podcast. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Your Natural Dog. My name is Carter Eastler. I help produce this podcast with Angela. And today I have the distinct pleasure of introducing you to one of a close friend of the pod. This is Megan Stoll. Megan is a game changer in this industry. She is a total badass. Um, and she kind of she she's got her hands in a lot of different things. She owns Pet Power Studios, which is an incredible independent pet shop in Southern California. She also owns a small distributorship um, that distributes fantastic natural products all through that region. And in this conversation, Angela and Megan really talk about kind of what is the difference between these big distributors and your smaller ones and your independent pet shops to your big box shops and really what what you get by kind of getting those economies of scale and these giant shops versus a personal touch where they're actually vetting products and they know who the people are and they know how these products are advancing. So this is uh, what we were calling a little bit of a bitch fest today about kind of the industry at large. You're going to love this conversation. Enjoy. with Megan Stoll of Wiggle Butt and Company. And um, I think that you're going to be my favorite new person of 2024. Yay. Uh, yay. She's like, what? No, um, it's because there was a lag a little bit, so I didn't get to hear the intro, but thank you. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I friggin' love what you're doing, and I'm so glad I got to meet you. Um, I met you at the Feed Reel Summit, and you came up and introduced yourself, and I fell in love, and then I stalked you until you were my friend. Um, That's but all right. I did plenty of stalking before I even met you, so we're even. <laughs> Yay! Um, so you guys can see why I love this girl. So this girl's a badass, as you heard from the introduction, and we're like, we love to talk about how effed up the distribution for the pet industry for the pet stores are like what do we call it distribution the distribution companies yeah distribution as a whole the system is broken majorly just like the vet so. industry and that system is broken and what i realized as we like had this conversation we were like oh yeah look it's all the big guys, the same people who are in control of both the vet industry and the pet stores and the food. And then we realized, Megan and I were like, wait, you know, pet parents don't know about this. So let's no. tell them what it's like, what it's like yeah. to own a independent pet shop. 
which are our, our favorite shops. And the reason they're our favorites is because the owners usually are women, usually women who care, usually women who take a lot of time to vet the products. Um, yep. I was one of them. Megan is one of them. We deal with them yep. all the time. These are the places that the people will know what foods have been recalled, what food companies have been bought up by the evil players in the industry. Um, they're up on everything. So we love these independent pet retailers and want to do everything we can to support them. And this is where we choose, uh, CBD Dog Health especially, Susie's especially, um, chooses to distribute our products through because they care and they're educated and they know better. Um, yeah. But we want to tell you how hard it is for a pet retailer. Um, so where should we start? <laughs> Well, it's so hard to even pick one thing, but I always go back to the fact that when I first got into this space, I wanted so badly to get into distribution because that is what I was told would be helpful for our brand to get um, accessibility, awareness, and all of the things. So that is how the system was. It was, you don't go direct to the consumer. You don't go directly to the retailer. Like You need these guys to do it for you. So of course, in hearing that, what did we do? We chased these dang distributors for months and months and months, couldn't get a return phone call, couldn't get anybody to even sample our products, couldn't get a human on the other line. And I was really pissed about it because I was like, we're not selling Hoover vacuums. We're selling really good stuff. And a lot more pet parents need to have this and dogs need to benefit from this. And at some point, you know, you just take matters into your own hands and you're like, well, if they're not going to respond to me, I'm going to do it my dang self. Um, and I always looked at it like when I went into store after store after store and started to see the same things, I kind of viewed it as each store being an outpost for the distributor and mm -hmm. not necessarily a reflection of how awesome and amazing and beautiful they were as humans, they were just selecting products because a distributor sales rep told them that this is what they needed to carry. And of course, because we're so overwhelmed and we have so many things going on and very limited time, if you run a pet store, as you know, Angie, um, you have to make decisions that are easeful and working with a distributor in some regards is easeful, but you don't realize what you're committing to when you sign up with them. It's like selling your soul to the devil, if you will. And it's like a David and Goliath situation. I mean, at the end of the day, you have these awesome mom and pop shops and they are working with the equivalent of Walmart. Right. Exactly. I, well, and that same really thing happened to me. Yeah. When I start, yeah, when so I, I bought oh, my too. shop. Yeah, I bought yeah. my shop and decided to add retailer, all the good stuff, you know, and then I go to the distributor and I can't get the good stuff from the distributor. I can get one of them from the distributor and I have to meet a minimum for my stores. And then during COVID, it was a nightmare, like mm -hmm. staffing issues in Florida. It was impossible. We can't get anything. It was ridiculous. And I met someone like you in Florida who did the same thing. She's like, I'm going to start, I'm going to start my own distribution company and I'm going to start getting these good brands so that I can get them to these good stores because they don't have time to go out and vet and look and no. they want to no, not at all. and we're not a, the good stuff all a lot of the really good small batch stuff is not available through the big distributors so they can't get it so that means they have to place that order that fifteen hundred dollar minimum with this distributor and then turn around and place their orders with all the individual you know small batch awesome companies that are really making pure products and totally. People don't know that. People don't know how hard it is. No. And it, it's, it boils down to the fact that I think that the reason distribution started was to solve logistics problems. It wasn't necessarily to grow great brands. It was to help big brands who didn't want to get their hands dirty. Because of course, if you're manufacturing stuff, you don't want to spend time with your end customer when you're Walmart. You just want to crank as much as you can, get a biggest return on your investment as you can. And at the end of the day, what ends up happening is you're putting the profits over the pets, I guess, is the easiest way to put it. And so now, since the system's so broken, the retailers are in the same boat saying, 
well, what do I do? I have to send off all these one-off orders to get good stuff, but I don't have enough hours in the day. And then of course the big distributors do carry some decent things like uh, specifically frozen food. Cause that's a really hard one to distribute on small right. volume. And so you do have to rely on them to some degree, but let's just say you're only going to get one brand from the big distributor and they have that big, huge minimum. And it's so scary. Cause you're like, I'm a small store and I just want X brand from you. Well, now you have to tie up your cash flow getting just that one brand because you don't want any of their other junk. So it's just like, once you do it, it is really hard to get out of it. And um, yeah, I guess fixing the system to me means bringing distribution back to a regional level. Yeah, absolutely. Carrying really good local brands, supporting really good local brands, having these small people that actually care. And then of course, if, if decisions were all driven around doing what's right, we wouldn't have greedy corporations, but that's just not the case, right? So like there are very few people, especially when it comes to making money that are operating on a system of integrity. It's amazing because people don't understand that what a company, a new brand has to go through to get with these distributors. And what's terrible is as a store owner, how many times if they did get in, how often I would be sent the wrong items and I'd call up and I'd go, hey, I got stuff I didn't order. I'd have to, of course, make sure they didn't charge me for it. That was 50-50. Sometimes I did. Sometimes I didn't. And they're like, oh, okay, leave it aside. We'll come pick it up. They never come pick it up. And I remember I would just look at these boxes of these stuff and look at the brand and going, someone worked so hard on that and they have no idea it's going to be probably tossed in the trash because they're never going to come pick it up. And you know that they're never going to give that company back its money and one of the things that has happened in the CBD world that blows my mind, especially in Florida, I don't know if it happens in California, but um, the biggest distributor who was a nightmare to work for. Um, we'll remain and nameless. Oh, no. Southeast Pet, the <laughs> worst. I'll, I'll name them all. I don't care. They know I hate them. They hate me. I hate them. They're, they're nightmares because, of course, I didn't come from this industry. So I was like, what is wrong with you people? Like, and they do, they come hard. They offered me freezers. We'll give you a free freezer if you, and we'll even fill the freezer, which we know is happening now with uh, one of our competitors. Literally guys, Pet Relief is walking into stores and literally giving them free product to get rid of someone like us. Um, but freezers, yeah, they fill the freezer. You're you're like, of course, I'm a new store. Hell yeah. Freezers, what, five, th three to $5,000? And then to fill it is another, what, two to $3,000? And they literally give you that for free. So that so it's like a drug addict. As a or the experience as a retailer is the exact opposite end of the spectrum as it is for the manufacturers who sign the deal. So while they're going to wine and dine and give you everything you want under the sun, as a manufacturer, they want to take your firstborn child. And they want you to run every promotion, cover every promotion, give them a, like a free palette of stuff. And oh, by but the way, understand if, what you're talking yeah. about is the small distributor that can't, the small manufacturer that can't do that because yeah. they're making real food. The distributor Precisely. who, the, the manufacturer who can do that is making shit little rocks in a box and their margins are huge because it costs nothing to make it and distribute it. So they make yep. a lot of money, but Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. So continue that. What Megan is talking about is how hard it is for the people who are making real food, whether it's raw, gently cooked, freeze dried, how hard it is for those brands to have to literally sell their soul to get in with one of these distributors. I don't know why anybody makes food. It's, it's honestly, from what I've heard, again, I don't work with big distributors like Susie's doesn't, um, obviously CBD dog we don't doesn't, either. <laughs> so I just have to disclose that these aren't coming. Like, I know that this is what's going on because I have friends telling me who work with the distributors, but like something, this is just a simple example. Um, I don't feel comfortable naming names of the people who shared stories with me, but the distributors are fine to talk about. But one person in particular has a small batch company. She was working with one of these large distributors, animal supply company, and um, they owed her at any given time upwards of $100,000 
And then even when they do make a payment, which is months and months after the products have sold, they might write it for $80,000 and say, sorry, we ran promotions and like we had returns and there's not a line item thing saying we had to take deductions for X, Y, and Z, which by the way, I think that's acceptable, but just to take money away and to not have any explanation as to why they weren't writing the full amount. And then to keep you on hold for six plus months, like I'm not a bank to you. I'm you, I should be charging you interest it's for the this. mafia. Like, yeah. It's like literally I mean, like, like controlling your whole business. Were you around when, um, I think there was a cat company, a raw cat company. I can't think of their name anymore, but I'm pretty sure one of the big distributors bankrupted them from not paying them. Yeah. I think I do remember that story. It was a raw cat company. I can't remember who it was. It was right when I got started in the industry, like 10 years ago. And because their accounts receivable was so large, like they could not make ends meet because they, you know, we, I don't have a hundred thousand dollars laying around you. No. And this, what I want people to realize is that this is, I've been a small business owner. This is my fourth business, I think, um, that this exists in every industry. There are bullies who are controlling it and they pick on the little guys. Um, I remember my last business, same thing. I had a huge client and when everything went to shit and they didn't have the money, they're like, we'll pay you in six to nine months. What are you going to do? Tell them no. Tell them, stop distributing my food, sue you. Mm -hmm. No, you can't do that. That doesn't, it's never going to work. Guess who has more lawyers and more money and will just drag that out forever until they bleed you dry. So yep. I guess what we're trying to say is that when you see that support small business, it's not just a stupid American Express. I mean, I hate American Express. Really, American Express? <laughs> Fuck off. Are you kidding me? I can't believe that they have <laughs> that. They are the worst for small businesses. The worst. The worst. Yeah. So it's a stupid marketing campaign that Amex uses, but we want you to support these um, independent retailers because we've been them. She is one. And she's now a distributor that's helping these brands not get abused and doing her part yeah. and disrupting this crazy industry that we're in. I mean, I can't. I can't believe it. I feel like every industry has the big bullies who are trying to control it. And then there's the little guys that are working, the building a little army to try to change it and make it best for what? Our freaking pets. We just want yeah. what's best for them. Yeah. I wouldn't do it for people, just pets. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's even more corrupt. <laughs> Carter, what do you yeah. think when you hear this? The industry is far worse than, I mean, we're dealing with a lot of shady stuff, but like, the pet, the, the human industry, I just heard a statistic the other day, like 95% of what we consume meat wise is from factory farms because mm -hmm. the demand is so insane. So if you think that your pet's food isn't also coming from the same place, uh, it is, and it's not great. And if you wonder why you have an itchy dog or a hairless dog or an anxious dog, it's probably because they're eating a shitload of antibiotics and hormones and contamination and heavy metals and the list goes on. So amen. It's, it's just seeps into the pet industry, right? Like whatever happens in the human happens in the pet. And sometimes it's worse and sometimes it's better, like not to get off subject, but pet health insurance apparently is better. Huge. It's, it's better. It's better. It's not being controlled by the same people who make the food and make the pharmaceuticals yet. But and there may be some that are, um, but no, they they actually will they actually will do what an insurance company is supposed to do. And what's cool is that they're ones that are going to not only if a vet recommends a full spectrum hemp extract, it, they will cover it. But they will look at things at diet and grooming and other things that will actually help the pet live and be preventative. Yeah, it that is a really cool thing. And that's why I think, you know, I do this podcast is A, for other holistics to come on and go, okay, I'm not alone. Okay, no, I do want organic. I do want clean, real food for, for our pets. I mean, for us, mm -hmm. for our families, but we're going to concentrate on our pets here. Um, and how hard it is to do that because there's people making great stuff, but it's hard to get it to you. We don't have the millions and millions of dollars in marketing. Um, 
you guys probably don't even know this as a CBD company, we're not even allowed to talk about and say what our products are. We're restricted. Um, we have to buy ads for you to even see us. So everything we do is so complicated. Oh, that's what I was telling. I was telling the story about what happens in Florida with the, with distributors, a, um, CBD company, a full spectrum, good, good company, Charlotte's web. At, in Florida, you can buy the full human line of Charlotte's Web through the pet distributor. And I, I couldn't believe it. I like wrote them all. I'm like, they don't care. What's the problem? So literally people who don't know the difference between a human product and a pet product are probably purchasing the wrong thing. Of course, pets don't need flavoring and sweeteners and all of that other stuff in their medicine. And Charlotte's Web does make medicine, but someone who's looking at a catalog of a thousand different oils isn't gonna know. So that's like, it's even irresponsible and dangerous what some mm -hmm. of these um, people do. But I can see, I can see the meeting happening and I can see the Charlotte Web big wigs with big distributors and going, we'll give you the whole thing to sell. You can mm -hmm. have, that means, what does that mean? That means all of the uh, employees are probably taking the human thing as a benefit, as a whatever. And that's something that a small company could never, ever do. I think that one of the coolest things, I, well, well, I think one thing that really kind of is of this moment is these 2.0 pet parents' um, hunger for education. And what you're talking about, Megan, about, you know, being able to rely on these smaller distributors and smaller kind of mom and pop shops is you really get access to like the information right from the horse's mouth. You get the education right from the people who are making the products and the people who understand them in a way that you just can't with big box stores and these distributors who have no connection to the manufacturers that they actually work with. Right. Not at all. And I think. Um... One thing I'd like to say about Wigglebutt, uh, Wigglebutt is my small distribution company that's based out of Colorado that services Colorado, Arizona, Utah, and California, Southern California. Um, I'm kind of a one woman show. Of course, I have a warehouse staff. I have customer service. Um, the one thing I know my SKU is inside and out. I know every price of every SKU. I know every ingredient panel of every SKU. I know the owners. I know where they make it. I know how they make it. I am so invested in the um back end like what's going on behind the scenes because i would never be able to carry somebody or something that actually was a conflict of interest for me and what i mean by that is i just set the bar so high like it's up here for a reason and i don't compromise myself and come down here just for money which in the long haul has has financially strapped me in some ways because have i gotten the opportunities from Companies that are unethical and unscrupulous, sure. Could I turn a quick dollar on that? Sure. But then I wouldn't be who I was. So I have to kind of stick to this ethos. And in doing that, um, it does make my life a little more challenging. Like uh, Angie, you know, you're, you're always a champion for things that, you know, it's like a salmon swimming upstream. You, you're always just fighting. Like you're, you're tired. Like I'm freaking tired. And it's like, I'm going to keep like swimming like a little fishy and keep going. But it's really, it's really exhausting to be in this place because you think that you're doing what's right and what's ethical, but sometimes that just, it, it's a hard, it's a hard fight. Um, and in saying that, I wanted to touch on the fact that um, being a one woman show is hard in the sense that I'm not going to get back to emails in 12 hours. I'm not going to like respond to the credit memo request in three seconds, but I'm going to do it. It just takes a little longer. And sometimes that is frustrating. I know on the receiving end, but that you're either going to get no customer service or really good, but just give me, you know, a couple more hours to answer the emails than the average person. And then what it's amazing is that I don't pe th think people understand is that you do all that research. So does the store store, the stores mm -hmm. that don't, you don't service aren't lucky enough to get you that you've done all that research. So they do the research themselves or they take someone like Susan Thixton's list and goes, goes through that. Um, totally. how much time it takes to do that. And then the company gets bought and everything changes and you have to start from scratch again. <laughs> And not only did they have to start, start from scratch, but like this happened to me when the whole answers debacle happened. And yeah. here I am, a groom shop 
turning yeah. customers over to raw feeding, get them on board, everything's going great. And then I have to go, oh, wait, you can't feed them that anymore. I'm not carrying it. This is why I need you to switch over to this again. I mean, it's a full-time job because it's happening constantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those same people who are fighting the good fight, they're probably tired too of all the, the hoopla that happens. But it is our responsibility as these independent store owners to continue to keep our finger on the pulse for our pet parents because they are relying on us. Um, that's how I feel. I feel like I have their pets' health and wellness like in my hands. Um, and they, you know, they trust me. And I, I just once a company takes that turn, I wash my hands. There's no like, oh, I'll get to it in a week. Oh, I'll get to it in a month. Like, nope, you done messed up and you're gone. Right. I can't and trust you. No, yeah, there's no like, there's no going back. Once you know, you can't unsee. And once you know, you can't continue to sell shitty things. Yeah, I agree. The, the vetting process that, that these um, small independent stores go through and the way that they, like you said, know their SKUs inside out. I think that there's such a cool relationship that you can have between like your your veterinarian and these shops where like the vets don't know what the current brands are and, and all these kind of insider things about like who is still authentic, who still is operating with integrity, where the store owners are the ones who are kind of like the boots on the ground who are actually seeing what's happening in the landscape. So it's it's like such an essential relationship to have there that, you know, it, it, it doesn't exist everywhere. And right. we're so I lucky to have some stores that do. I also find that these stores have like a um, nutritionist that, you know, they took a course, they're certified, they understand raw feeding or food. They have, um, I just went into a store, a new store that we are at and they had gone, all the staff had already gone through our training. So that means they knew all about CBD now and knew how to use it and awesome. recommend it. It was really cool. And that's what I love this. We're just educating as many people as we can about these natural um, things that help our pets so much, but are so hard to get those products to you and to get that message and education to you because we're suppressed at every turn. <laughs> yeah. And it's like a prime example of this is uh, not that it's CBD related, but farmer's dog, right? Like they took out a Super Bowl commercial. We're talking millions of dollars were spent on this. And of course, every little small, lightly cooked food company is never going to be able to afford a Super Bowl commercial. Why? Because they're spending money on their products and their ingredient panels and not on their marketing. And so I think it's, a good it's point. one of those things where, yeah. And, and for, you know, for you guys, it's the CBD is even harder because up until what a year, like, a year ago, you couldn't advertise and you still struggle every day, right? Oh, like, yeah. So, well, Farmer's Dog, they can go to the Super Bowl and tell all about their stuff. You can't, we can't do that. Okay. So what's wrong with Farmer's Dog? I don't, I don't know, but like, what's wrong with it? Um, so the way that I spin it is if you are able to supply an entire country or entire nation with lightly cooked food. And they are, they're shipping all over the country, right? I don't know what their volume is exactly, um, but they're supplying, if they have a Super Bowl commercial, they're making good money and they're supplying a lot of people. So at that point, I don't think that you can source with integrity. I don't know if they do or they don't, but I would assume at their price point um, and the fact that they're supplying an entire country of pet lovers with food, like they're going to compromise a bit on where they're sourcing that food because there's no way that a small farmer could meet the demands of right. a national company. Right. And then on top of that, there is the synthetic load, which not to go way down that path, but it's all synthetic so they do vitamins. Use synthetic so vitamins and minerals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's so, just the same as like kibble, in my opinion, at that point. Right. Oh, really? You think it's that bad? Just carbohydrate loaded. So that's what that's what I think is a beautiful point. Is that well, what you can go into a grocery store and there's a fresh pet freezer now in the dog food aisle or even in target mm -hmm. that is not real food that's not fresh that's not real um but mm -hmm. even when you get to the frozen freeze dried all of those uh things there are even good and bad in that and you don't know unless the store and the person who's selling it has done their homework because it's so funny because i'm gonna bring up me being in that store again i bought a whole bunch of stuff and the lady next to me was already uh had 
fan of our stuff and looked over and saw I had a certain bone broth and she had a different type of bone broth. And she's like, is that one better? And I said, a million times better <laughs> because I know better. <laughs> yeah. I know which one is the good one and which one is the bad one. And there's always going to be that. And it's so hard. Like even oh. imagine a good pet independent retailer who's like, all right, I want bone broth. Bone broth. I'm going to carry three brands. Um, let me go on my distributor. Hopefully they've got the good ones. Oh, wait, they don't have my favorite. Now I got to figure out, I got to reach out to my favorite that I know all about because she's on my computer screen educating me all the time. Well, how do I get her stuff? And now that reaches out to that individual person and here we go. Um, so it is really difficult and it really is to keep up even with the people now who are constantly changing, constantly changing. We just mm -hmm. did this with um, looking at other CBD companies. <laughs> Megan and I just did this. I know we did this before Carter at, back in the day, which is amazing because we did it in 2019. Megan and I are doing it now where the companies that used to be full spectrum hemp extracts and now are broad spectrum and have changed their formulas. All of them, right? I, I want to say almost, I think everybody has changed their formulas at um, one point or is another. Is there still full spectrum? I haven't picked up a bottle in a while. Yeah, Does they're still full they're spectrum, still full but they're, okay. they've changed everything. Um, but I'm yeah, I think, think it's... I don't know. I can't think of another full spectrum that I've seen on the shelves. And I go into, you, you know, I go into stores every day of my life. So I don't know. I haven't seen one. Yep. So Besides, beware. You, you know, look, <laughs> always, always uh, look at your product and make sure that it's still the same product. If it's the food you've been using for a while, make sure the same people still own it and are still doing the same thing. If it's a mm -hmm. uh, hemp or a supplement product, make sure why you decided on that product, that it is still that product, because mm -hmm. we cannot believe how things change. And I don't know about you. I would be like, I would think the people would, or stores would drop it. Mm -hmm. How do you become one thing and totally change to another thing? It doesn't make any sense, but they think, don't. I think they're so overwhelmed too, right? Like they don't even I know. Sometimes want to, yeah. I want to put the blame sometimes in the store owner and point the finger and say, you know better. But I sometimes think they get so overwhelmed with their daily responsibilities and managing staff and dealing with expenses and uh, food like margins. Short staff. Are being short, short staff, staff. All, mm -hmm, all that stuff. And sometimes I think these things happen kind of under their nose. And unless they really pick up like, oh, I brought this in five years ago, unless they really pick up the bottle and look at it, everything, God. every order that comes in and they're doing it all the time, which is hard. So nope, the brands don't have a responsibility to inform the distributors or the retailers or even their customers that they have completely nope. changed their formulations to something no. different. And in wow. some, in some ways they don't even have to inform AFCO because you can make ingredient panel changes. And as long, so say you're out of a certain ingredient, you're actually allowed to substitute for a certain period of time. So long as your plan is to go back to set ingredient. So funny. We just got something yeah. that said that, did you see the, one of the stupid pet magazines, pet business or whatever, uh, with the yeah, press I get release, them, but I go like, Oh no, I just laugh because it gets, that's taught. It just should be the evil players of the pet industry. Here's your magazine. And one of the top ones was hemp may be approved for dog food. And, um, so I've sent it to a friend and she's like, yeah, but you know, it's only going to be, it's only going to be the, um, crap, the, you know, remnants that are left over won't have any cannabinoids in it or anything like that. And I'm like, they don't even know what cannabinoids are. So they're not going to be able to regulate no. that. They don't, they don't know now what the difference between CBD, THC, yeah. marijuana, and hemp are. And these are the people that are regulating and in charge. So it makes mm -hmm. me laugh. It just makes me laugh. Yeah. Why? The because it's this agency. beautiful plant. What'd you say? Yeah. The regulatory agencies are a joke. Um, and so that is the other reason why people have such a hard time navigating what's good for me, what's not good for me, because, you know, greenwashing and all the things that you can do as a company. And, e and, the, and in the hemp world, it's even more prolific. Oh, and don't uh, even talk about the mushroom world. Yeah. For every one great company, you probably have a thousand terrible ones. Yeah. I'll tell my little mushroom. Cornell did that study in 2019 where they tested 25 top CBD brands 
and only 10% of them were within, or, or five, or only 20 of them were within a 10% range of the CBD that they set on the bottle. Four of them had heavy metals in them, and then a bunch of the other ones had no CBD at all. So it was hemp seed oil, it was like salad dressing, basically. You know, but they can say whatever they want. There's no regulation. Yeah, I think it's really funny that you said that because I was on Austin and Cat, or what did I see? I forgot. I know I got through it on Austin Cat because I was checking to see if they were full spectrum or broad spectrum, making sure I wasn't gonna, you know, shoot myself in the foot and say, "Oh, they only use broad spectrum," and that's not the case. It is the case. And on their site, they point you to a study in 2022 that was done, or a report that was done on same thing report, you know, took all these uh, full spectrum products and tested them and look how many are, you know, their score or whatever. And they're celebrating that they got scored high and you go on it and it's for their old full spectrum product that they don't even sell anymore. And it's still on their website. So the confusion is there for whatever reason. You can't get a COA unless you send them their email. That should be a red flag. But I think it's so funny that it's from 2022. We're on it, by the way, and we score higher. So I can't believe I'm glad we made it and I didn't even know it. I always am like, oh, shit, what is this? Was it a pay to play? Is it, you know, what is going on here? Um, but I thought that was really funny that they're still pointing to that and they're not, they do not have full spectrum in it. So it's like, even if you were to go to this company's website, it would still appear that it's a full spectrum hemp extract and it's not. The only way, and even this can be forged as we have found, or people can be adding isolates to make their COAs look a certain way. So that I know is going to be a, comp a topic of conversation, Carter, we're going to have to tackle over and over again because it's already happening. But if you can't find that COA, I don't know why it has to be so difficult. It should be very simple for you to go to the site and find your batch and find the COA that shows you that it's a full spectrum hemp extract. Not email somebody. areas there are, the clearer it is that they're not proud of what's in their product. Or they're hiding something. Yeah. 
the smoke and mirrors or whatever what it's smoke is it smoke and mirrors probably sounds Just, good yeah <laughs> like that's what they're that's what they're throwing up it's like a bunch of like flames and stuff like look over here so we can do all this shit over here you know yeah it's kind of like what our government does to us sometimes but yes <laughs> And that's what's crazy is because I look at Austin and Kat's other ingredients and they're fabulous. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, so yeah. why? Why did they change? Why did that happen? Why is it such a hard job? Like why? Basically, the, the thing, thank, I feel like I go on this episode, it's like, thank you for listening to our bet, bitch fest. We just wanted you to know how messed up it was and that you now still have to check everything even if you buy it at your independent pet retailer and help them out if you do find something that a business has been sold or went from being a full spectrum to a broad spectrum product help them out and let them know because they are yeah. really busy and yeah megan thank you for doing what of i'm course. hoping more people will follow your lead so that these little stores don't have to depend on these big distributors anymore and we can continue to help them and in turn help this industry and help the dogs and the cats that are suffering from crappy food and these chemicals and preservatives and everything else. I could not agree more. So thank you so much for bitching with me because it's fun <laughs> to have a bitching partner and it's not even you know it's like sometimes I do feel like I'm nagging so boxy all the time but someone's got to do it someone's got to do it anytime <laughs> honey what neck well we just maybe we should have like a um you know quarterly bitch fest about how messed up the industry is <laughs> bitching and coffee coffee and bitching yeah something like that and we'll put just a female yeah, we dog do a up live, there. You know what we should do? We should do a live podcast sometime, somewhere. Oh, like a, on a Facebook, a, do a Facebook live or something? Yeah, no, like let's be in the same place and like have oh. people come on and talk and bitch in front of people. Yes, at your place at Pet Power Studios, which would be perfect do it. for that. Give me a reason to stay in California long. I'll be like, oh, for the next three months, I'm, you know, recording from Pet Power Studios. You know, I would right, love that. I'm down. You're, cool. you're invited any day you want. Awesome. Carter, you want to come? <laughs> I would love to come. Thank you for my invitation. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. Again, so yes, appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Megan. Yeah, see you later.